All right, let's see, I'm muted. I have the right screen shared. Hello, everyone. Hope you can hear me and see me. Uh, so welcome. We're on week five, episode five of our CICD pipeline setup. We've made some good progress so far, but I wanted to mention last week, I uh, had a couple of issues with, uh, with OBS Studio. It was showing the wrong screen, so I apologize for that. I caught it up after we finished the, the stream, so I apologize for that. Um, we did some make, we, uh, we made some good progress though. Uh, we fixed the time issue that we had on our CentOS box that was interfering with our GitLab installation. So we figured out that, right? That was uh, an interesting one because uh, as we were troubleshooting, right? Uh, we changed the time and then it worked. It kind of makes sense, right? The browser was trying to connect to a server that was running like a week behind, right? So there were some issues over there. So we got that fixed. Um, so we have now a full installation. Uh, you should see my screen, a full installation of GitLab, Community Edition, right? The runner is there. I created an account, a developer account, uh, and I'm logged in with that developer account. Um, and I also created just a CI CD project and I don't have anything in it right now, right? If you remember, we also have the github.com a repo All right if i go this should be cicd twitch create environment so we have this setup scripts right for the create environment folder if you remember the previous weeks we created this so we're just going to drop everything in this folder as we go forward, then we're gonna sync up the folder, this uh, repo on GitHub so that you can have, you folks watching can have access to this. If you wanna build your own pipeline following what we've built so far, you can just git clone the repo from GitHub, it's public, uh, follow these videos and you can get your own pipeline set up. That's the whole purpose of this Twitch streams. All right, so we got GitLab running. We got our CICD repo in here. Uh, we didn't really clone yet the content from here into that repo. We'll do that a bit later. Uh, let's see what we have. We have CentOS 9 running. Let me see. Just making sure. Let me also connect my Visual Studio code. Uh, update later. So let's see, Remote Explorer. I want to connect to this one. Connecting current window. Password. And I think I'm already connected. Explorer, open folder, home parallels. Sounds good. It's gonna connect to it. Uh, password, and there we go. Um, connected with my Visual Studio code to my CentOS instance, right? So we have there our create environment uh let me see if we do quickly where are we uh source twitch our quick git status so we have some modified files uh new file and tracked gitlab setup so let me add them all git add all git status git commit m 
But first, let me check the date also on this. May 10th, 9.05 Pacific. We're cool. So the time is up to date. So git commit dash m. Uh, what do we have created? Make file. And GitLab set up logs, right? So let's see if I do a git push now. And there we go. We should have the latest version now here. If I just refresh. And we do update it just now. The make file, GitLab set up so you folks can check it out is github.com slash ai devna slash cicd dash twitch all right um let me also get all my content uh, in here but there's several ways of doing this right i could from here create a new file, move everything there, right? But once we make a bit more progress, we'll do actually that. Let's go and have a look today at CML. I was telling you about CML. <clears throat> Let's see, is anyone in the... There we go. We have some folks uh, in the chat. If you have any comments, as usual, just drop a message in there. The thing is last week, also I didn't see the chat because they've uh somebody was telling me hey you're sharing the wrong screen right so i didn't catch that uh because chat was not updating so it was a bit of a issue um with sharing the wrong screen and then not having access to the chat and seeing your comments but i see now folks joined in so if you have any comments anything or if you don't see the screen if you don't hear me please let me know if you just see you know my lips and you don't hear sound Please do let me know so that I can troubleshoot here. Uh, all right. So then I was telling you we fixed GitLab, right? We have it running. Let me quickly make sure. Oops. Quickly make sure that uh, the containers are running, which I know they are, but it doesn't hurt. To quickly check. 15 minutes, both containers for GitLab C and the runner are running, they're healthy, I can log in, everything is cool, good. So I was telling you last week about CML, right? So Cisco modeling labs and um, using that as your test environment for the, for the pipeline, right? So you could have other virtualization solutions, build your labs in there, right? Or you could have your own physical lab, your racks of equipment, you have their IP, you have your credentials on them, everything, right? So it depends on where your test environment is uh, when you build these pipelines. Definitely a best practice would be to have a test environment, one shape, form or another. You don't really want to start, especially when you get started with uh, building your own pipeline. You don't necessarily want to have this push configuration changes and modifications straight in your production infrastructure, right? Because it could get problematic. So I would definitely suggest starting with the test environment. Like I said, I'm going to show you CML. You could have your own, but CML is a product that from Cisco that I'm a fan of. I'm using it. I have my own installation of it. Um, and today we're going to go and I'll show you CML. I'm actually going to troubleshoot an issue with the licensing uh, because you might have this too. The server used to run fine. I have a CML server used to run fine for the longest time. And now I have a licensing issue. So we're going to go and see, try troubleshooting what's, what's going on with that license as you know, you might encounter this issue also uh, in your CML instance. At the same time, let me see if I can actually uh, reserve a uh, 
sandbox as a backup for a DevNet sandbox, DevRel sandbox, if it works, um, which it might not, because I'm VPN right now into my DMZ uh, in San Jose. Okay, so that might not be running. So let me show you then, like I said, I'm VPN into my DMZ. This is my personal CML installation. This is called Logging Labs. I have it is running on this IP address, right? I'm logged in, I have the dashboard. I have my uh, a network simulation here with a couple of CSR 1000 Vs and then a couple of Nexus 9000 Vs. All right, so I have these virtual instances. They're interconnected here. You see, it's pretty much a full mesh. I have my outside connection to the outside world, so I can actually SSH into these devices from outside, from internet. If I do port forwarding, I can, you know, connect to these virtual uh, instances of routers and switches from wherever. And that's done by this bridge to outside connection, which is basically just forwarding traffic on the um, internet facing interface on your CML server. So you see here I have system health issue on the right hand corner over there. Uh, the system isn't licensed. So I mean, it was fine, like I said, uh, until a couple of weeks ago, once I started looking for CML to, to show you folks here on Twitch, I saw the licensing issues like, okay, let's troubleshoot together. See, you know, what's going on, how we can fix it. If you remember, I also said last week that um, first thing first, which is going to reboot the box, right? So I'm uh, I'm running it in VMware. Uh, I have a ESXi installation here. Uh, this is the management interface 10.10.10.1 10, 10, 10, on that ESXi uh, instance. And let me just connect to it. save this okay it's logging in come on uh, yes XI and then we're just gonna I'm gonna show you uh, how the installation looks it's pretty straightforward if you purchase CML, right, uh, you get access to, uh, I believe it's an OVA, right, an OVA image, you just load it up uh, in your favorite virtualization infrastructure, ESXi, QEMU, right, you could be running it in uh, Parallels, uh, you could be running it in VMware, whatever virtualization clients they have now, right? Uh, it's basically just an OVA image and you load it up, you select your network interface connecting to the internet, right? Or to your network. Um, and you go through the installation process, next, 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 right? You load it up and um, that's it. Then you configure an IP address on the, on its interface, and uh, you connect with um, over HTTPS. So these are my VMs. I have eighteen on this ESXi server, and the CML one uh, is right here. So this is my CML installation, the ten 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 thirty three that I was showing you. Uh, this is how it looks. I have an older version, 2.3. So I believe they're at 2.5 right now. I might upgrade this to 2.5. If you folks are interested to see me upgrade this from 2.3 to 2.5 or whatever the latest version is, let me know in the chat or comments or send me a message on Twitter. Um, and then, you know, we'll have a session and I'll go over upgrading this from 2.3 to the latest version that's currently uh, available now. But for now, we're just going to go and give it a reboot 
let me see if I remember. Potentials on this. Or is it root? No. Okay. I'm just gonna go old school. Uh, reset. Yes. <clears throat> just gonna restart it. Wait for it to come online. Let's give it a start the ping. These hot corners are messing with me today. Do a ping 10, 33. And we'll see when it's back online. We also see it here in this window is, is rebooting. So let's see. Uh, what's wrong with the licensing? How come you can connect to it, to the server, or what's what's going on here? Uh, rebooting. Coming back online. Well, that was fast. And we see we have um, ICMP reply, so it's back online. Okay, let me refresh this. Logging back again. Back in error. Okay, so it's gonna take probably a couple of more minutes for this to to come back online, right? Bring all the services um, up and running. So we'll just give it. Actually, it was really fast. All right, so we still see here system health issue licensing is a problem. Uh, out of compliance happened for several different reasons. Detailed instruction for each reason can be found on the CML FAQ. All right, so let's see this. Please follow the instructions applicable to you. Your license has expired. The virtual account containing this prior instance has a shortage. So it's out of compliance. Enterprise license 1.0. Registration status is registered. The virtual account containing this product instance has a shortage of one or more instances. Refer to license usage table below. The out of compliance. Log in to Smart Software Manager on your Cisco Smart Software Manager on prem for more information. Okay, so let's see if we open this window too. If it's gonna work. So this is gonna be an interesting case here because I'm VPN then. It's a split tunnel VPN. Right, so it's not all traffic going through the DNZ. Uh, I have my internet traffic going the regular route, and then I have my DMZ traffic, the private IP addresses, the 10 slash 8, going over that VPN tunnel. But there seems to be an issue with routing to Cisco domains while I'm VPN on, on this DMZ. So let me see if I disconnect. If I disconnect. Uh, from the VPN and if I refresh this, oh, it works right away. Okay, so licensing for Cisco modeling. Okay, CML personal, uh, enterprise, is small licensing when you purchase. Okay, so let me see what's going on here. I'll log in. To 
my authentication. And let's see what it says here. Schedule downtime, uh, license registration portal, this is, uh, traditional licenses, and a smart account. Um, uh, view accounts. My account is there. Licensing virtual accounts, access level public. Right, so it looks to me like my account is there. Looks like it's active. So let me see. CML 2.3 out of compliance licensing. What's going on? Troubleshooting steps, Cisco Smart Licensing, uh, FAQ. This is the FAQ that we were looking at, right? What third party images licensing licensing uses Cisco Smart Licensing. You initially set up, uh, you need to register the installation with your Smart Licensing virtual account. You will paste registration token in the dialog on the licensing page of the Cisco Modeling Labs UI. Smart licensing, these are mostly hidden for personal users. Since you know, personal customers do not have a smart account on their own, are placed in a special virtual account that is owned by the CLN store. Um, now, visible, simply go to my account page on the CLN store for your active order and click view licenses button to view and copy the registration. Okay, so I have the enterprise one. The Cisco software manager web portal, when you purchase one or more licenses will be deposited into a smart licensing virtual account, which is associated to a smart licensing account. Depending on whether or not you are part of a larger company organization, blah, 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 two, two, two. Think of a smart licensing account as an organization with all the accounts. General registration token that will give you CML enterprise. Yes, copy the registration token to your virtual account. Yes, you must license before you can start any node. The Cisco model require licensing for offline. Yes, starting supports offline deployments. So I need license. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, in my account, I see the license as being there, right? Um, I'm just gonna try to see if I can open A support ticket with them to tell them hey this used to be working right it's not working anymore what's going on I have the license it's in my uh, smart licensing account do I need what 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 do I need to do um, where can we do that tools let's see where's uh, diagnostics upgrade system breakout no client library sample labs no no is there anything on the settings? Sessions now. Everyone shows me server disconnected now. Oh, because I'm not I'm not VPN in anymore. That's why. <laughs> um okay, so let me see if I do support. Specific license reservation. Where is support? Support right here. Cisco Model Enterprise version. Open a case on the web. Open a case by email. Phone support. Uh, reach out and ask questions. 
on the CLN. You can register to Butterfly about uh, releases. Oh, okay. Let me see if I can open a support case. CML. Modeling labs. Uh, licensing support. Welcome to Cisco licensing support. Uh, open a support case. Let's give it a try. Software licensing, CML, no. Uh, Cisco, physical delivery, Broadworks, or licensing portal, Cisco Smart Software Manager, on-prem, open case, title. CML was a 2.3 licensing out of compliance. Problem description. I have a Cisco CML enterprise installation that used to work until a couple of weeks ago. Now I get a out of compliance message under licensing and cannot start any simulations. Um, what else we have here? I also checked my account under smart licensing and I see the CML license as still being valid. Please provide guidance on how to fix this issue. Thank you. So version is 2.3. Uh, okay. All right, submit case. So we'll give it a try. In the meantime, what we're gonna do is 251 release announcement, April 18th. So that's the latest version. What we can do while I wait for this to see what the support is uh, gonna tell me is that I'm gonna show you um, the DevNet sandbox for CML, right? So if you don't have your own CML instance or your lab, you can use the one that we have on developer.cisco.com slash sandbox. So it's a free Account, I'm just gonna do get started with CML. I'm gonna reserve it, see how much, how many days I can reserve it for. I'm gonna log in here. And I'm gonna look for CML. And I'm gonna reserve the enterprise one, which is this. They're on 222 here, it seems. Um, so I'm just gonna do uh, reserve the sandbox and I'm going to reserve it for oh, two days up to two days okay so I get actually two days access right to a CML enterprise um, installation by using the DevNet uh, sandbox like I said it's a free sandbox all you need is a DevNet account, so developer.cisco.com slash sandbox. You go, you search for CML. You can get it for two days, for up to two days. 
you need it for you know a couple of hours get it for a couple of hours whatever time you need it you can get it i'm getting it for two days just to play around with it um so it's reserving what what's happening actually is the sandbox is getting spun up all the virtual components the virtual machines right cml the virtual server that i was showing you in my lab um the same installation is going to be brought up here is just instead of having version 2.3 like i was showing you the 2.2 um so the reservation is coming up let's see in the chat we have any messages uh don't see any messages um so reserving come on yes it's gonna take probably around five ten minutes for this to for the sandbox to come online and have our own cml installation so we'll have a look at that um how it looks while we wait for support to give us any hints or pointers and i mean if i don't hear from support you know within the next couple of days i'm gonna do troubleshooting maybe we move the license and add it back again um so we'll see how uh, how it progresses come on sandbox um in the meantime i could just so we have the cicd folder in here right i could clone this and then move all the stuff how could we do it to keep them in sync right because i have this repo on my GitLab installation locally on CentOS 9. And I also have my GitLab, my GitHub, sorry, my GitHub repo that I've shared with all of you, which is this, right? So I have the content on CentOS and I wanna have the same content in this repo. It's probably gonna be a um have my source cicd twitch i could have my source src cicd and then copy between them keep them synced up that way i guess because there's two different repos on two different platforms right so um kind of create that so existing repo give remote add um, I will just git clone this clone with HTTP uh yeah let's see if i can do a ping gitlab no so we don't have a cat what was it etsy name uh, uh Anyway, we don't have a name resolution for GitLab pointing to our IP address. So I'm just gonna go one folder up here. I mean, source. And I'm gonna do uh, 10211557. git clone all right so now on the source i have my cicd twitch which is my github.com where you folks have access to where we have our confirm our uh, create environment right all of that setup scripts and then we also have 
our CICD repo clone from GitLab. So there's like two repos that I want to keep in sync. Uh, all right, so right now, I have my CICD, doesn't have anything, right? Or it's just the readme file and git, okay. And then my CICD Twitch, that has my create environment, license, readme and all of that. Okay, so let's just copy recursively uh, from CICD Twitch, everything, uh, or just create new, copy to CICD. Let's see if it copied it. Oh, it did, right? So we have our creating uh, underscore environment. We don't care about licensing in here and we can say the same. So if I do a git status here, I have that create environment folder, which has all this setup files, Docker compose, YAML file, um, all of that. So if I do a git add everything, git status, git commit, initial commit, and then git push. Username would be developer, and then password and there we go if i refresh now this we should have our create environment folder in there and we do All right um perfect so this is where you kind of will start defining our pipeline let's see what happened with the sandbox in the meantime uh can I create sandbox due to following conflicts? One or more of the resources are already reserved. May 11th to 13th available time slots. Hmm. Okay, so this hasn't happened to me before. <laughs> this sandbox, as you can imagine, is very popular. Um, so it seems that it's maxed out, the resources that are allocated to it are maxed out, folks uh, throughout the world, right? All uh, people using the sandbox there have reserved it. And um, I, right now I cannot reserve it. So that's a surprise. Um, so only starting tomorrow. Let's see if I'm starting tomorrow from 2 to 2.40 p.m. Reserve. Let's see what it's going to do. So it's pending. Uh, it's going to start in 21 hours, to my reservation. Okay. So at least you've seen, right? If you haven't been aware of this sandbox, you have seen it now, um, how to basically access it, reserve it. Um, and next, since we cannot, I cannot really show you CML today, let's go and start building our Ansible setup for our pipeline, right? Because we will have Ansible perform the configuration changes as part of the pipeline. So let's go and create the Ansible configuration that we need. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna go under CICD Twitch. Let me see here, ping is not gonna work anymore because we're not VPN in anymore. Uh, so let me go here.
and create a new ansible.cfg file. So under CICD Twitch, I'm gonna do a new file, ansible.cfg. So this will be just your ansible configuration file, your typical, and I'm gonna go and do default. And we're gonna have four options for our Ansible config here. Conf collections pets would be just collections. Interpreter Python. A path to it would be a virtual environment one, bin Python. Uh, deprecation warnings, deprecation warnings, false, and then also host key checking false we're as we SSH and uh, connect over maybe a rasconf interface or netconf right I don't want to check the validity of the host keys on the host that I'm connecting to so it's gonna be a false uh, because it's going to be in most cases, it's a lab environment, uh, self-signed certificates uh, and that type of stuff. So I don't need host key checking to be enabled. Okay, so I have my ansible.cfg. Now also let's go ahead and create our host file so I'm going to do a new file I'm going to call it hosts right uh, where is it new file hosts so this is going to be uh, just a grouping of my annex OS switches my annex is 9000 switches that I have running in, those are the, the hosts that we're gonna target as part of our pipeline for configuration changes. So I just have two switches, 177 and 178. Those are the IP addresses for the management interface on those Nexus switches. All right, so the host file is just specifying uh, as a annex OS a grouping so I can reference these two IP addresses with annex OS and it's going to refer to both of them and um, defining the IP addresses for those two switches so I'm going to save this <clears throat> and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a um, host underscore vars folder to start defining uh, variables configurations for our, for our hosts for the two switches so i'm going to do here a new folder host vars and under host vars i'm actually going to have configuration pertaining to my two nexus switches right so i'm just going to do And here I'm going to have a new file. Um, new file. With the configuration 
with the YAML configuration for my 177 for my switch one. Right. And same thing for my 178. So this is just going to be my host bars, your typical um, YAML files for uh, your Ansible installation. And for 177, I'm going to have this file with this configuration. OSPF configuration, right? So you have to start your YAML definition files for Ansible with this three dashes, right? Then you have OSPF process ID would be one, then the router ID, uh, and then the OSPF configuration, which is basically just the interfaces, which interfaces, uh, what's their IP, what OSPF area you want them to be in, and then uh, what process ID you want to have them as uh, part of that interface configuration. So I have a loopback zero interface with this IP address. That's also the router ID, just a, your typical loopback interface. Then I have uh, Ethernet 131 slash 3 and 1 slash 4 with these IP addresses. Right, and I have a VLAN 106 with this IP address. Basic OSPF configuration for your Nexus switch, right? So I'm going to save this. I'm going to have the same for my second switch. If I do 178. configuration will look pretty much very similar, but of course with different IP addresses. So like the router ID is dot two, loopback uh, address is dot two, 252.9, this was 252.1 slash 30, so it's a different subnet. Same here, same thing here, 252.13 uh, with the slash 30. Well, this is five. So it's different subnets, making sure that there's no overlapping in subnet is going to, of course, that's going to cause issues if you have duplicate subnets or misconfigured subnets um, on your devices. So just your typical OSPF configuration on one, two, three, four interfaces. I'm going to save this too. So I have my basic configuration for my two switches. And next I'm going to go and I'm also going to create a group vars folder. That Uh, will have a username and password associated with them, right? Which username and password would I use to connect to these devices? So it would be. Uh, Let's go and create a new folder. Group bars. So these are variable pertaining to a group of devices, while the host bars contains files pertaining to individual hosts, right? Variables and configuration pertaining to an individual host, while group bars would contain configuration and options variables for a group of uh, 
uh, devices. So under group vars, we have a new file, nxos.yaml. And in here, we're just gonna have our Ansible user, Cisco. This is the user I'm gonna connect, use to connect with my devices. Ansible password, Cisco. And Ansible network OS. It's gonna be NXOS. So that Ansible knows that it's connecting to an NXOS device. Right, so here's where you will define your credentials, username and password that Ansible would use to connect your devices. If you have um, different, if you have AAA configuration, right, you would be specifying those username and passwords here. If you have individual username and password for each of your devices and they're different, then you would define them under host underscore vars. Okay, so let's save this. I have my configuration, uh, let me close this. Uh, I have my host defined, I have my Ansible CFG, right? Uh, no, I don't. So let's see what else do we need for our Ansible to work. And that would be Uh, uh, under config, right? We would have it, uh, hosts, host bars, group bars, config. Yes, let's create a new folder called config. That's where we'll actually will have our playbooks uh, running. So we'll create a new folder called config. And in this folder, uh, we're gonna have two new folders. Uh, let me see quickly. VPN in back to my DMZ. And see how they how we call them. I want to keep the same name. So I'm connected. I'm there. Okay, so distribution switch one and two. So just gonna create two new folders in here. New folder, this switch zero one, and another folder this switch zero two. And in here, we're gonna define our Ansible playbooks that are gonna run on how to actually configure OSPF, right? We're gonna have a playbook on, an Ansible playbook on configuring OSPF. So now depending on this could be a combination, the playbook could contain different steps. You could have a complete configuration, right, of your device in that playbook. You could have snippets, you could split them in separate playbooks. It's really up to you on how you want uh, to approach this. If you wanna have the whole configuration for your device in, in one playbook, or you wanna have based on features, splitting different playbooks, it's really up to you how you wanna have it. 
Um, so here, let's see. Uh, how we're gonna, how is it gonna look? Configure um, configure OSPF. Let's create a configure SPF uh, give me one second here uh, let's actually do this next time so we're gonna because it's gonna take a bit longer time to Uh, to to get the configuration started for the ansible and i want to start it from the beginning from our for our playbooks um we're gonna go line by line uh and i don't want to start it now and we have to finish in three minutes so we're gonna pick it up back up next week i'm gonna let you know if i got anything from support on cml right see where we stand with that licensing what's going on if i have to remove it and we add it again uh, i'm probably gonna give that a try and let you folks know if that's working. Um, so we started configuring Ansible, right? We define our hosts, two IP addresses, uh, our host vars, with configuration for each host, our group vars with the credentials that I'm gonna use for connecting to the devices. And next we're gonna go and we're gonna have a look at the actual uh, uh, OSPF playbook for configuring OSPF on those two switches. Next time we're going to do that, finish up Ansible and then um, have a look at CML, right? Hopefully the sandbox, I'm going to reserve it in advance just to make sure that we have access to one environment to show you how it's going to connect. And um, then we're also going to have a look at Docker and creating a Docker image for our pipeline and how that is going to go. So that's coming up next week. Um, thank you folks for joining and, um, see you all on the next session of our CICD pipeline journey. Um, hopefully you were able to hear me, see me this time and we'll continue next week, pick up from where we left off. Thanks everyone. Take care and I'll see you on the next one.